I spend a crazy amount of time listening to audiobooks as I work around the farm. Other than my animals, audiobooks are the only things that keep me company. But have you ever wondered how they actually make audiobooks? That's a great question. I've been wondering that myself. Because I've got to imagine it's a lot more complicated than just some guy in a room reading a book. So I am in the process of driving to Portland, Maine today. You see, I'm heading to a recording studio. Because today I'm recording the audio version of the Toby Dog book. On sale everywhere September 18th. I will be taking you guys behind the scenes and showing you what it's like to record an audiobook. Quite honestly, I don't know what to expect because I've never done anything like this before myself. But come with me, my friends. So I have been working on the Toby Dog book for, I don't know, almost three years now. And so the fact that we're almost ready to launch the book and that I'm actually like today recording the audiobook version feels like kind of a milestone to me and I'm very excited about it. Hi, I'm Morgan. Hey, I'm Morgan. Nice to nice meet, meet you. you. Do you mind if I have a camera? Is that cool? Oh, yeah. yeah. Cool. You're going to be in this booth right here. And feel free to call this like your home. You can bring water in here. When we're talking to you, we'll be on this channel. Okay. You'll be reading on this channel. Yep. You may hear a little bit of it in this channel as well, but this channel is also where, like, when I play something back, you'll hear it. I'll just start reading now just yep. so you can get a level and all that Perfect. good stuff. Yeah. The little white puppy's paws crunched on the cold, hard snow that had accumulated. Outlined in the... Outlined in the... <clears throat> outlined in the light of the full moon, his mother stood, barking. So one thing to just let everybody know, I'm actually dyslexic, and like when I was a little kid, I had a really hard time like with oral reading. Every day I would get like pulled aside and they'd give me like special practice stuff. And eventually I got to be where I was like an okay oral reader. But let me just tell you, it is not one of my strong suits, so this could be very much a long day. What's going on, man? What can I say? So Morgan was uh, MFA in film school. Uh, getting his getting his degree, uh, cast me first in in one project called the Sensitive Burglar. The Sensitive Burglar, I love it. So the next one we did actually was like a really like the uh, higher budget, you know, um, and it was a JD Salinger. Yeah. Uh, so spoof. basically, a crazy fan goes to see JD Salinger like back when he was still alive, yeah. and like track him down in the middle of nowhere. Greetings, Mr. Salinger. My name is Holden Coffee. Holden Caulfield? Yes. Holden Caulfield. And it was <laughs> real, like really well done. And, and you know, shooting like 16 like that, it just, it's a time <laughs> capsule. What are you doing with that air rifle? I, I don't understand how I was... Oh, ow! <laughs> you know, I moved to LA. Yeah. I'm there 15 years, 16 years. Um, I don't start narrating audiobooks until like say 2012. Okay. And so now I'm at a point where I'm, I'm publishing and producing. My friend Chris is being really modest here. He's recorded nearly 500 different titles and he's been awarded six different earphone awards. When it comes to people reading audiobooks, he is actually a big, big name. And he offered to help me produce and direct my audiobook. Are you sure he'll be okay with it? Not everyone is crazy about ghouls. He had, uh, went into like corporate stuff. What, what were you doing? I was just doing marketing for insurance company. Initially. Sure, but then he, he broke away, has a farm up in Vermont. Yeah. Release the Kraken! Like writes a story. He's self, self publishing yeah. this by choice. Come full circle. He writes a book about his farm. And, there you go. Uh, and he's like, I. And know. now he's directing me. Yes. So, yes, that is my friend Chris, who I have known for, yeah, gosh, more than 20 years and probably haven't seen face to face in about as many years. And, and he's going to be the guy producing the audiobook. Chapter 2. Cock a doodle doo! Screamed the rooster as he broke the dawn stillness. The little white puppy woke to find that the little three-sided shelter that he shared with his mother, aunt, brothers, and sisters was empty. He was all alone. The little white puppy... 
yeah. a little more of a, of a... Yeah, I'm trying to be up and energetic, like, yeah, but it's like, hey, it's New Day, Dawn, kind of broke sort of vibe to it. <clears throat> the little white puppy was not afraid, though. He could hear his brother's... No, 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 I'm sorry. No, 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 <clears throat> the little white puppy woke to find that the little three-sided shelter that he shared with his mother, aunt, brothers, and sisters was empty. There were some bones to chew and plenty of fresh drinking water. The temperature was warm and... <laughs> I did this to myself. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes there's just one sentence mm -hmm. that just... Yes, it's, it's just... Yes, you did, young man. <laughs> <laughs> So we're at 50 minutes after, what, three plus hours of recording? 11.30ish probably is when we got going. So yeah, about three hours, yeah. Yeah, yeah things are going slow, and I'm doing my best, but gosh, I gotta tell you, this audiobook recording stuff is way, way harder than I thought it was gonna be. He could hear them singing about some animal they were eating, perhaps a deer carcass they'd discovered. They were still too far away for Toby to make. <clears throat> So Morgan, yep. it's more like, but I think here it's more like Toby is thinking of what it could be. In his earliest days on the farm, Toby's bark didn't sound very big, but at time, <clears throat> yeah, the, the big, I did. Yep. To be very honest with you guys, the recording session did not go very well. I don't feel like I ever really got into a good rhythm and I stuttered and stumbled my way through the entire book. In fact, for a 20,000 word book, it took me nearly 11 hours to record the whole thing. But despite all of my struggles, Alice the engineer and Chris were able to get me through the recording session, and I really did hope that the final product would be worth listening to. So, so what's next for the book? Like, What do we gotta do to get this thing finished? Oh, uh, everyone else records their stuff. While it was my job to serve as the narrator for the book, Chris and I both thought it would be best if we actually cast actors to play the different characters in the book and almost make the book like a radio play. And so we went out there and did a casting call and we were able to find a few very, very talented voice actors. Aaron Moon. Jemima Puddleduck. Quit your quacking, you silly fools. Jessica Coyote. Be on the lookout there, kid. Bobcat. Get out of here, dog. Barbara Chicken. Hey! <gasps> Puppy! I bet you can't catch me! <gasps> and playing the role of Toby Dog was Kenny Yates. Regular decaf latte. I'll drink some coffee when I solve this crime. <laughs> we can't play games like wrestling, hide and seek, or tag. The farmer will get mad at me if I chase you. Okay. Remember yep. that, Toby Dog up energy. Copy, Toby up. Now through the magic of modern technology, Chris and I were able to watch Kenny record his lines and give him feedback as he recorded. And, and now Kenny here for this chapter, this is like the very next day. <gasps> no, you can't get the raccoon without getting the ducks. And I don't think the farmer would like ducks smelling like skunk. No offense. I liked it. Toby quickly stopped him. No, you can't get the raccoon without getting the ducks. I also had to record some sound effects to bring the life of the farm to the audiobook. Come on. Come on. Cock a doodle doo. Cock a doodle doo. I'm Natalie Nottis. I'm a voice actor. I mostly record audiobooks, and I've been doing this like five years. I have a background in opera. It's actually pretty hard to get paid to sing opera. So I was looking for something that I could use my acting and voice skills and get paid for performing. And this is the perfect job for me. I get to do it from home. I mean, I love books, so it's a perfect fit to get paid to read books all day, every day. And I also love that I get to be all the characters. When I was on stage, I was always just one character and often the same type of character over and over. But in a book, I'm everybody usually except for this book i'm not everybody <laughs> i think you had what like four or five different characters so you're toby's mom you were definitely little barn cat i'm trying to think what else you, you had i don't you weren't jemima aaron's victoria the owl oh victoria the owl that's right yeah that's the other really big one that you got yeah <laughs> lil if you if you'll notice little barn cat is right over my shoulder hey lil oh, hey. lil say hi she's not impressed does she know that you wanted her to be a little bit whiny uh, she, she's always a little bit whiny. I tell her that. And so okay. I, I think she's 
probably a little resentful. She's actually also the publisher of Lillian books. So if you look at the logo that we have for our things, it's actually a drawing oh. I did of Lil basically sitting on a pile of books, pretty much sitting just like she is. So about a month ago, Morgan sent us 13 duck eggs in the mail. Operation Release the Quacken. Release the Quacken! Can I do Oh, it's that? too slippery for them. They're slipping. I'm gonna... Uh-oh, uh-oh. Oh. Now, Natalie, uh, a little bit of trivia for folks. You guys actually have some of our ducks at your farm, correct? Oh my God, did did you know that they died though? Oh sh They all got killed. Yeah, it was like two weeks ago, the fence went out that night and something killed all the ducks. Oh, I didn't know that, no. So this just happened, I'm so sorry. Yeah, it was like three weeks oh. ago. Your, your kids must have, that must have been really rough for them. Probably Dude, it was awful. Yeah, yeah, something got in and just killed them all, didn't eat them, just killed them. Very sad. Are you now thinking about getting your own Toby dog? We might need something. Yeah, we might need a Toby dog. No, there is some magic in the Livestock Guardian dog. Rush delivery available. Call and order right now. Looking back on it, he realized that he did not quite know what that meant at the time. How it was both an honor and a responsibility. Now, sitting here in his crowded dog shed with all the other animals on the farm cheering him on, he knew what it meant. He knew that he had a farm of his very own. He knew that he was Toby Dog of Gold Shaw Farm. This concludes the reading of Toby Dog of Gold Shaw Farm. So I actually just did the first entire full length listen through of the finished audiobook. And I'm kind of surprised I'm not crying right now because Toby Dog, I am so happy with how it turned out, buddy. No, seriously, I, I couldn't be any happier with the final product of, you know, essentially years of writing, the effort of recording, casting actors, the expense, the whole thing. Just listening to it right now, just like that felt totally worth it to me. I am so glad that the audiobook is now complete, and if you guys are curious about the audiobook, it's actually now officially available for pre-order. It officially becomes available for sale on September 18th, so if you want to check it out, go for it. And yes, I am super excited for you guys to give a listen to Toby Dog of Goldshaw Farm. Thanks for watching, everybody. Oh, and thanks for being such a good snuggly dog, Toby Dog, yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I love you, buddy.